Hi there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play Nostalgia. Last time we did a whole bunch of quests here in the epilogue, and today we're going to start one of the first of the two bonus dungeons, and these bonus dungeons are hard! So fly north of London and east of Greenland, and hey, there's the Tower of the Moon! Oh, huh. Yeah, why would they want to do that? Oh. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, so this will uh, take care of our quest as well. So, that's pretty nice. I'm going to be doing with map completion and all that sort of stuff off screen, because we're going to have to come back here anyway for a second quest, and we'll do that episode today. I'm pretty much going to get all the Tower of the Moon stuff out of the way today. Huh. Well, I mean, it is right in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. I would assume that anything they build there would be frozen over. Okay, so yeah, let's go exploring. This place also has teleports and switches, just like the Tower of the Sun. However, it's not that mazy at all. Pretty much, uh, as we go through here, um, I am going to be fast-forwarding all the random battles. And um, I'm going to be using some music from a really good game from the Super Nintendo, so yeah, there we go. But anyway, these guys here are the Platinum Jellies. They have 2,700 HP and no weaknesses. All the enemies here are the same level. They're all level 75, but uh, I came in here and I was fine at my level. But uh, yeah, originally before I fast-forwarded through all of these um, random battles, the video was over 50 minutes long, getting everything out of the way with the Tower of the Moon, and I was like, oh, that's ridiculous. Who has time to sit there for 50 minutes? So I decided, I made the executive decision, I'm going to fast forward the random battles. But also, there are, um, another thing that happens in the Tower of the Moon and in the next bonus dungeon is that there are some bosses that can appear randomly as well. So previous bosses that you have fought, uh, can appear randomly and, um, really kick your ass, and they come with inflated HP totals and stats, but I will not be showing those because then this video will just be forever. Anyway, these guys are evil boxes. They have 3,200 HP, and they're easily dispatched enough. So as you go through here, you're going to be finding various switches, and you have to hit the switches to um, open doors, essentially, to go on through this place. But anyway, let's see what we got going on down here. Oh. Great, more crap that I have to buy for a million gold! Yeah, it's gonna take me forever to fill out this Adventurer's Handbook. That's why I feel like, you know, filling out the Adventurer's Handbook, all you get is a Sage's Stone for doing it, and uh, what that does is it reduces your MP cost of everything to zero, which, granted, is very, very handy, but, like, it takes, like, you literally have to complete the entire frickin' game just to get that damn Sage of Stone. You have to find all the monsters, fill out all the maps, everything from all the dungeons. I mean, it's, it really just takes forever. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Resistant to Darkness, that's it. Eh, it has better stats, might as well. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing, you know, the straight upgrades throughout here. Another thing, I've been putting points into Hyperspeed for Pad, because that'll come in handy against some of these bosses. Uh, in order to get hyper speed, you have to get speed boost up to level 5, and then you'll unlock it. Essentially, it raises your, the agility of all your party members. Um, just kind of like hyper attack and all that. So, these guys here, let's see. They have 3,350 3, HP and no elemental weaknesses. So, yeah, just take care of them the best way you know how, and you'll be fine. Uh, let's see what else I want to talk about. Oh, you know what? Um, something that I I've been talking a lot about Atlantis and Mew and Lemuria, like the mythical Lost Continents. Let's talk about some real Lost Continents, such as Zealandia and the Kerguelen Plateau. Now, I'm sure that you know about, you know, New Zealand and New Caledonia, islands over in uh, the Pacific Ocean over near Australia. But what you might not know is that those are actually part of a sunken microcontinent uh, called Zealandia and it's 93% submerged. It's this huge plateau that is 93% submerged. Um, and I believe it was submerged something like 20 million years ago, uh, back when the Earth started warming up and ice was melting and all that, so, you know, there was more water in the ocean. And it submerged, and the only parts that actually stayed above water were what we now know of as New Caledonia and New Zealand. Now, you have to ask, why is that actually important? Well, here's the reason. 
They are continental islands. Now, as you, I'm sure you know, there are seven continents, and each continent has their own flora and fauna. Uh, okay, well here we have uh, Feather Queens. I've been interrupted. They have 2,800 HP, and um, they have an instant death ability, which sucks, so try to use Deadshot on them if you can, but eh, we shall see. But anyway, as I was saying, so there's continents, and or continental islands, and there's also volcanic islands. Volcanic islands don't really have their own flora and fauna. They get their, you know, plant seeds and animals from migrations and whatever kind of comes up on their shore and everything else. Basically, they get their animals and plants from the other continents uh, as it washes up on the oceans and everything. However, continental islands, because they've been around for millions of years longer than volcanic islands, have a much richer, more developed, more biodiverse uh, swath of flora and fauna to choose from. So that's why it's very interesting whenever you look at, you know, these sunken continents. And that's also why uh, New Zealand has such a rich, and same thing with New Caledonia, such a rich uh, biodiversity. Same thing with Madagascar. A lot of people say that Madagascar is like the eighth continent of the world, uh, simply because its, it's uh, biodiversity is so extreme. Here we have the White Knights. They have 3,300 HP. And um, they can get into like a defensive stance where they reduce any kind of physical hits against themselves by 50%, and then they can also counterattack any physical hits as well. So they are a pain to deal with, and they take forever, especially because they have huge magic defense as well. As usual, pretty much all of the enemies in here have like over 200 magic defense. It's insane! But as I was saying, there's another uh, microcontinent, which is the Kerguelen Plateau, which is in the uh, southern Indian Ocean, way on down by Antarctica. And unlike Zealandia, there's only a very, very, very small portion of this uh, plateau that's actually still above water, which is the Kerguelen Islands. But unfortunately, because of its position in the world, where it is, it's kind of in the, uh, I believe it's the Roaring Forties, the latitude um, where there really is no land masses, where the wind just hits, there's nothing to block the wind or anything. So, um, there's not really a lot of flora and fauna there, and it's very, very cold there. And also, unfortunately, there were some shipwrecks way back in like the 1800s, 1700s, um, where a lot of rats were released, and it killed a lot of the native wildlife, like the native birds. And um, also there's rabbits on the island, which is eating all the native uh, fauna. So it's really horrible what's happened to the Kerguelen Islands, but I digress. Yeah, that's enough about talking about microcontinents. So let's get back to the game here. <laughs> I, I, I can really go on tangents here, I, I've got to say. So anyway, you want to go inside the left-hand places and the right-hand places. Uh, over here we have two more... Um, blocked doors, and in order to release those doors, we have to go inside the left-hand places and the right-hand places, yet again, get some treasures, and hit some switches. That beautiful gem uh, will increase your holy resistance whenever you get the, um, when, uh, whenever you get the gadget appraised. Um, I don't think it's worth it at all, but, eh, it's there. You can, you, you can use it if you want to. I wouldn't bother. I'd rather have the silver clay statues for extra experience and things like that. Anyway, go over here, hit this switch. There's no treasures over here, unfortunately. So just keep on moving and grooving right along. And uh, now we're going to go down to the rightmost entrance down over here. Whoa. And let's see what we're going to now. Okay, this room. This room's kind of strange. Uh, first things first, there actually is a hidden treasure inside this room, but first we have to kill the Ashuras. Let's see. They have 4,500 HP, and they are weak to wind and dark. So, yeah, it takes quite a, some time to beat them, so I'll meet you whenever they're dead. Okay, took care of those losers. Anyway, the treasure's right due south right there. So, go ahead and click that on pad. Also, for the second quest, uh, the dragon that you're going to be meeting in here is also in this room. So if you're wondering how to find 
uh, the dragon that you're going to have to fight. And I'll show it at the end of this video. It is in this room right here. It is not at the top of the tower itself. Anyway, moving right along, let's head on over through here. And we're almost through with this place. Thank God. But uh, make sure that you're at least, I would say, level 70 or so before you hit the top of this tower because the upcoming enemies are hard. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, the tricolor. I believe that that's equipment for Fiona, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, let me save and then uh, check out this equipment real quick. Yeah, totally save. Totally make sure you're all healed up and you're ready to go. Oh, not that bad. Okay, why not? And in we go for boss time! Oh, what the hell is that thing? Holy crap! This is like a hideous mutant angel with wings coming out of its crotch with a horrible bad case of hemorrhoids. Like, what the hell is this thing? Ugh! You need to pop that zit on your ass. My god. Anyway, here we have the Overlord. He has 30,000 HP. And uh, a couple things about him before I just kind of leave your own devices is the main thing that you want to look out for is his Ancient Light attack, which will deal roughly 500 damage to all of your party members. So try to keep your HP at least one person's HP above 500. Also, you're going to want to slow him down so use Heavy Shot as much as, as much as possible and speed your guys up by using um, Hyper Speed. Also, he can get to a battle stance, which means that every time that you physically hit him, he will counterattack for roughly 250 to 300 damage. So, have Melody on healing duty, give up Fiona's turns to Eddie, use Pad to speed yourself up and slow him down, and then get in some damage to the bullet drive whenever you can, and you should be fine. care of him. So let's go inside this conspicuous door right there. Oh, the, the Slepnir? Oh, what is this thing? An airship? Huh. So we get a third airship. Cool. Hey, hey. Okay. Sweet. Well, it's a hell of a lot better than the Maverick. I guess we just kind of drowned the Maverick in the ocean or something. Who knows? So it's looking pretty damn cool, I've got to say. So I went ahead and flew on back to London, turning our quest. Okay. What do we got now? Close of the Black Demon and Close of the White Angel. Well, that one's in the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, but we haven't found that place yet. But this one's in the Tower of the Moon. So, yeah, we have to head on back there. Hmm. Maybe it's a costume. That'd be kind of cool. Hey, hey, how do you know about this ship? Oh, there's a legend. The Roman Paradise in the Sky. Oh, great. We have to go find something again in the sky in our airship? That sounds like a load of fun. I can't wait for this. So I made it back to that room that I uh, was telling you guys about earlier. And there's this new treasure chest in here. And another boss! Lovely. So this guy is hard. 
He has 49,000 HP. I would totally recommend equipping the Dragon Killer Gem on Eddie as you take this guy down, but same strategies apply. And uh, have Melody be the healer, Fiona give up returns to Eddie, Eddie's using Supernova and Hyper Attack twice, Pat is Hyper Speeding, and also Heavy Shotting uh, to lower his speed. So, see you guys in a minute. I like it! It is! That's a really cute treasure! Yeah, totally! I wish that they didn't wait till the very end of the game to start giving out costumes. And, uh, yeah. So, let's go ahead and go back and uh, report that quest, and I'm gonna show in the end slate uh, a little bit more of that costume as well. But let's accept the next quest that we can do. It's the only one that we can do, but that's in the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which we haven't seen yet. But we're gonna go to it next time and let's play nostalgia this has been david if you like this please like comment and subscribe and have a good day